Hey, welcome back to the show. You know, if you've ever cooked with a wok, you know it can seriously add some delicious flavor to your food. But we know a lot of people are a little unfamiliar and maybe a little intimidated by cooking with a wok. So that is why we're so excited to introduce this new cookbook called The Wok, which hits bookshelves today. It's by Seattle cookbook author and chef J. Kenji Lopez-Alt, who made me one of his favorite recipes from the book. So we're going to be making my mom's version of mapo tofu. So I grew up in a Japanese American household. Um, so mapo tofu is traditionally a Sichuan dish, but it's very popular in Japan. And the style that they make in Japan is a little different because it's got more Japanese flavors to it. So instead of the, the traditional version, which is made, um, which is a, a really a, what's called a mala um, profile, which is a hot and numbing flavor profile, um, the Japanese version is a, a little more uh, savory and sweet. So I'm starting right now just by stir frying a little bit of ground beef. A lot of versions of mapo tofu will have ground pork and you can use ground pork if you want as well. But the actual traditional version from Sichuan is made with beef. Um, and this is how I always had it growing up because we live uh, in New York in a sort of meat packing area um, in Morningside Heights, which is well, no longer a meat packing area. But when I was growing up, it was a meat packing area. <laughs> and my mom would buy ground beef from a guy who would sell it to her um, out the side of her car window when she was stopped at a red light there. <laughs> You come by with a cooler with steak and ground beef. I'm just smashing up some uh, ginger right now. Uh, so, so the beef is cooking. Oh, go ahead, sorry. I was just gonna ask, is there like a secret to cutting ginger? Cause I find that a, a trying task. Oh yeah, so what I just did, um, and some people peel ginger, I sometimes do, I don't always do it. You don't really have to. Um, but what I do is I cut off little coin sized slices. Mm -hmm. I place them flat on my cutting board and then a big heavy knife like this. You can do a Chinese cleaver or you can do a Western style chef's knife, but you just give it a, a big whack and it kind of, so that, I don't know if you can see, but that's already pretty much. Breaks um, apart, okay. Breaks, breaks apart and then you just give it a rough chop. Um, and that's it. Um, you can I also, you know, it. you can also do something like microplane it or well, sometimes if my daughter is helping me in the kitchen, she's five and she'll help me by mashing garlic and ginger in the mortar and pestle. Um, all right, so our beef is cooked through. That's about four ounces of ground beef there. And now I'm adding a couple cloves of garlic that I smashed and chopped. Um, a couple teaspoons of minced ginger and uh, two scallions, just the white parts and pale green parts. No green parts, okay. Yeah, the pale green parts. And I'm saving, saving the dark green parts for at the very end of the garnish. Um, and you basically just want to stir fry that very lightly until uh, the fragrance comes out, but you don't want to let it go too long because it'll, it'll start to burn. Um, so about 15 seconds and we're done. Um, and now I'm going to start hitting it with my seasoning. So a couple tablespoons of sake, some mirin, which is a Japanese sweet wine. If you don't have mirin, you can also just add a little extra sake and a teaspoon or two of sugar. A tablespoon shoyu, you know, Japanese soy sauce. But you can use Chinese light soy sauce if you want. You can use tamari if you have, you know, a gluten sensitivity. I and mean, I'm going to add about a quarter cup of chicken stock. This is one of those dishes. It was my favorite thing growing up. And now it's one of my daughter's favorite dishes. So it's like, it's one of these dishes Aww. where if, if I come home, and there's not much in the fridge and I don't, you know, and I can't think of something that my daughter will immediately like. I can always make this because, you know, we always have tofu at home and usually have all these aromatics at home. Um, so I can make this for her and be 100% positive that she will eat it happily. And it's healthy. Actually, I noticed you added, was that like a, a cornstarch yeah, slurry? A cornstarch slurry. So that was just okay. a tablespoon of cornstarch mixed with a couple tablespoons of water. Finally, we're going to add tofu. You can use a soft block style tofu or you can use firm silken tofu. Do you drain your tofu, by the way? Or I don't press it or anything. You know, I don't do it in paper towels and press it, but I definitely uh, drain the water off of it. If you have a very low spice tolerance level, which a lot of Japanese people do have, you can leave it just like that. Um, if you want a little bit of heat, um, there's a couple things you can do. So you can add um, dobanjang, which is the fermented chili bean paste uh, from Sichuan, um, or you can add a chili oil. There's a really good local Seattle spicy chili crisp called Kari Kari that I really like. Oh. Thank you for that tip. I have to say, like, the, everything about this has seemed very accessible, not intimidating. And I think a lot of us might be intimidated to cook in a walk. Do you hear that often? Yes. Um, and, you know, there, I think there's this big mis misconception people have. Um, that's basically it, by the way. I just added Italian greens, um, the dark green parts as a garnish. Um, and that is it. But yes, I hear from a lot of people that, you know, they, they, they think they can't cook in a walk because they don't have a gas burner or because... Um, or they've heard that you need like a restaurant style, really high output gas burner in order, in able, to be, in order to be able to cook properly in a wok. Um, and that is not the case. Um, you know, the vast majority of people in the world who cook in a wok, like literally hundreds of millions of people a day are cooking in regular home kitchens. Um, so a lot of dishes like this, which is sort of a home style 
dish. Um, you saw I did it on an induction burner plugged in. You don't really need um, that big high heat. Uh, and you definitely don't need to stress out about working with a giant flame or getting or burning yourself or whatever. It's all actually a pretty relaxed and quick uh, process. Um, so that's, yeah, there's the dish. That's my mom's Japanese style mapo tofu. In the book, actually, there's also a, a recipe for the, for the more traditional Sichuan version as well. And we've got Kenji's Mapo Tofu recipe on our website. Give it a shot. Let us know what you think. And in our next half hour, Kenji is sharing another recipe from his book. So stick around for that. Hey, welcome back to New Day. So we are back in the kitchen now with more from Seattle chef and cookbook author Kenji Lopez-Alt. His brand new cookbook, The Walk, is out today. And now he's sharing another tasty recipe. So we are making one of the very simple no-cook side dishes uh, that I have in the book. There's a number of different chili oil recipes in the book. Um, this one is a mala chili oil. So it's got a, it's made with citron peppercorns and roasted chilies. And it's got this kind of tingly, numbing and hot flavor to it. You know, this is one of these things where it's like you have this condiment, so you want to use it in all these different dishes. Um, but of course you can also just buy chili oil if you want um, and that'll work great yeah, for this. You dish, make but. that one, but you said there's one that's really great that we can buy. What was the name of that again? Yeah, uh, Kari Kari, K-A-R-I, K-A-R-I. It's a local okay. Seattle brand that is really good. Awesome. Um, so that, that's what I would use if I didn't have my own right now. <laughs> um, and so this one, yeah, combines chili oil and yogurt and it's a real simple cucumber salad. Um, so we're going to start um, I have a uh, English cucumber here, part of an English cucumber. You can use, honestly, whatever cucumber you want, but um, I tend to prefer English or Persian cucumbers for these types of dishes um, because uh, you don't have to, they have sort of a thinner skin, um, so you don't have to worry about peeling them or anything. Um, so I'm just gonna dice this up, get it in a bowl. And then I have some red onion. That is <laughs> impressive right there. So I'm watch that when, for hours, just stop it. <laughs> when I slice onion, I always slice it um, for a salad, especially. I slice it pole to pole, so the top of the onion's here, bottom of the onion's there, and you hold your knife parallel to that. Um, and it ruptures fewer of the onion cells, so you actually get, um, you don't get as much of the sort of pungent, uh, you know, tear-inducing onion aroma when you cut your onion that way. Um, less so I crying. Recommend people. I hear exactly, less that. crying. Less crying, less, less stinky onion. Um, and then I just got some chopped cilantro. Actually, the recipe in the book calls for uh, chopped dill. Um, mm -hmm. That works fine, but I didn't have any at home. I just had some chopped cilantro, so I'm kind of improvising I love it. here. Use what you really, got. Yeah, yeah, basil would work, cilantro works. Um, if you don't have any herbs, that's also fine. Uh, that was a little bit of uh, rice vinegar um, and then a little bit of extra virgin olive oil. Okay. A little pinch of salt. And then I'm just gonna toss this all up. Um, and this part, you can actually do this part ahead and leave the onions and cucumbers just marinating in this uh, oil and vinegar mixture um, okay. in the fridge for even up to a day. Um, although, you know, it's, it's real quick and easy anyway, but if you want to make it even quick and easier, you can do this part all ahead um, and, it, and it comes out just fine. Um, and so now I've got a plate. Um, this one actually I got from Perkis Island Pottery. Yeah. This is just some Greek yogurt. I'm spooning it kind of onto the bottom of the plate and just spreading it out a little. Get my salad right in the middle of that yogurt. You don't need to be fancy or anything. Even if you're not fancy, it still looks fancy. Yeah. <laughs> if you want to add one more element to this dish, um, you can also add uh, crushed peanuts in here. And I think it has a really nice sort of nutty crunch to it, but um, I'm not doing that today. And then finally, just some of the chili oil. And that is it. And so when you eat it, you kind of mix it all up together. I really like the way the yogurt and the chili oil, like the, the cooling yogurt mixes with the cucumbers, but yeah. you get that nice chili oil heat. Um, so I think it all really balances really nicely together. Um, but there you go. It's like a five minute side dish. It goes really well with a lot of the other sort of cooked recipes in the book. Um, so this plus a, a stir fried recipe or a braised recipe, some rice, and you have a complete meal ready to go. So delicious. What are some of the <laughs> other recipes in this book that you absolutely love? Um, well, we did the mapo tofu. I mean, that, that is my favorite dish of all time, mapo tofu. That's the one I kind of grew up on. There's a recipe in this book also for my mom's dumplings, gyoza. When we were little, we used to actually use the same meat mixture that we used for the mapo tofu. We, she would make a big batch of it. Me and my sisters would sit there and fold dumplings once a month that, that we put in the freezer. And then she would use the rest of that meat mixture to make her mapo tofu. Um, so there's a recipe for the dumplings in there as yeah. well. You know, my Japanese side on my mom's side of the family. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of Japanese dishes in there. And then as far as like sort of the, the other Asian, Asian, Asian cuisines in there that aren't Japanese, um, there's 
obviously a whole lot of Chinese stuff in there, um, and in particular, sort of Chinese American uh, and Asian American dishes, because you know that that's my experience growing up is an is an yeah. Asian American. One of my favorite recipes in there is Vietnamese American San Francisco style garlic noodles, which Ooh. is this dish that sounds really weird. So it's, you use spaghetti to make it. It combines spaghetti, garlic, oil, but then also some fish sauce, some oyster sauce, and some Parmesan cheese. Um, and so it's this mix of all these. Um, I, East and West, Eastern and Western ingredients, um, super savory. It's almost like, it's almost like, you know, pasta, alio e olio, but it has um, these really rich, savory uh, Asian ingredients in it as well. That I love really well the together. intersectionality of that dish. Well, we've got Kenji's cucumber salad recipe on our website as well. So go check it out.